We have a lot to cover this month, so let's just get straight into it. My favorite match from the Turbo Grab 16 tournament. A very good professional wrestler displays such an aggressive and tight offensive strategy here while Velasquez makes for a great babyface having to use speed and cunning against the larger and stronger opponent. Started well with the more grounded approach and stiffer strikes and even liver work. Devolved into the standard subpar NXT main event by the final half though. The mouth blood is pretty cool though. Rudimentary and lifeless. The first big Kento epic that really clicked with me right from the go. Zeus was great as a big hard-hitting heel, and while I have some minor complaints about Kento, he brought some explosive energy when it was needed. Easily my favorite All Japan epic all year. Wasn't really feeling this for much of the first half, but once they started busting out the really crispy strikes at the end, they did just enough to make me call this something worth going out of your way for. Bloody and brutal. Hard to ask for much more than that. Loved this. Forget Brian, Luther's probably the GOAT. Makabe had one match for the collective weekend and he made the most of it, having an excellent cat and mouse back and forth match with one of the hottest prospects on the indies this year. Bitter old man trash talking and goading on the supernatural athletic freak, leading into both of them just beating the crap out of each other. Excellent. Okada still looks slow and sluggish as all hell, but Shingo works around this by just beating the crap out of him. Okada's offense still isn't great, but when he can be bothered to throw a lariat, those at least landed true. Best Okada match since the return from lockdown. Structurally very similar to Gresham's match against Shelley from the month before, as they work a double arm match here. It does have the benefit of a bit more of a veteran young gun dynamic, which adds a lot to the intensity of the finishing stretch. Best match from the collective weekend. It's Alex Shelley in 2020 against one of the best indie wrestlers of the year. Of course it was good. Exactly what it says it is. Not in a good way either. Exhausted crowd and generally sluggish action. Can't say I'm familiar with Tremont's career, but if his reputation is anything to go by, he was done dirty by having the clusterfuck of all things as a lead-in. Good kicks from Nakajima and a fairly strong babyface performance from Kiyomiya here. Still felt it drag a bit towards the end, but a stiff headbutt and cool kicks go a long way. Aging gunslinger against the shoot fighter. Not great or anything, but incredibly fun for what it was. Felt like the biggest match at the collective and for the most part, made good on that promise. I've never disliked an Ishii match more. Shame, Okada. A quick paced TV tag wrestled with a sense of urgency and lots of stiff strikes. Hard to get this wrong.
this was structured to build to the Walter Ilya title match, and so their interactions really elevate this, even when it did start to get a little loose at the end. Of course it rules. Just hit each other hard and let Shingo sell his arm. Wrestling can be easy. Almost liked it. Then the finish happened. A fascinating exercise on how to pace a match. Much more interesting than it is actually good, but I don't regret watching it at all. Probably the best match in the tournament to this point. Tight competitive grappling combined with stiff strikes and a clever incorporation of the pure rules. Everything you want from this tournament. Just real simple, well-executed wrestling here. Something brief and fun that just breezes by. This one takes a little bit to get going, but once Irie starts throwing bombshell elbows and Higuchi starts headbutting an old man, it gets really good. This somehow breezes by, but not because it's well paced, but rather because it feels like nothing in it is substantial or weighty whatsoever. The reason that near fall gets so much discussion is because it was the first time in that match something felt important. Good showing from Woods here as the more powerful and youthful competitor who has to be outfoxed by the wilier veteran in Gresham. One of the best matches in the whole tournament. Hard hitting, technically sound, and well structured. It's been an absolutely excellent series of matches for ROH so far. In terms of DDT six-man tags, this is on the low end of great. Still, it has a fun finishing stretch that perfectly sets up what's to come. Straight after the six-man tag, we get this fantastic fantastic war of attrition as Nautilus goes up against the relentless Eruption team. It's a main event tag team match built around Ueno selling his ass off and Eruption beating everyone down with strikes. Hell yeah, shoot it into my veins. Great match, if somewhat frustrating. This is the most urgent and hard hitting either of these two have looked in a long time. Lots of creative weapons work here and fun bumps that are unfortunately mixed in with your standard WWE forced attempts at drama and some misfired spots. On the whole, much more good than bad and definitely worth taking the time out to see. A really effective big man versus smaller bruiser match. Hard hits, cool bumps, I dig it. Much better than their first match with bigger bumps and a better pace. One of the more baffling matches to receive hype recently. Seriously, they were going at half speed and it was kinda clear. Big chops, big lariats, great. 20 plus minute runtime, less great. Head drops? Great. Overall, pretty great. There was a bunch of stuff I liked here, like RSP driving through the tubes and the big bump off of the balcony and RSP going apeshit with the light tubes in the finishing stretch. There's stuff I didn't like, such as a capacity crowd breathing on top of each other as if there isn't a pandemic that's killed hundreds of thousands of lives going on. Good match, I guess. Hope it was worth it. A perfect capper to the tournament from the two best performers in the whole damn thing. 
cleverly worked with the perfect amount of intensity and escalation to mark the crowning of a new champion. <laughs>